According to Chapter 828, Section 12 of the 2021 Florida Statutes, a person who intentionally commits an act to any animal which results in the cruel death or an excessive or repeated infliction of unnecessary pain or suffering commits aggregate, aggravated animal cruelty, a felony of the third degree. As quoted from the College Board stimulates moral courage and intelligent disobedience. Moral courage, it is the essential, vital quality of those who seek to change a world who yields most painfully to change. In other words, having the courage to stand up against immoral actions even in the face of adversity and resistance to making a meaningful change. Good morning, my name is Tyler Nichols. And my research answers the question, to what extent do ethical considerations of catch and release fishing factor into the health of release fish? Through my research, I have concluded that catch and release fishing has proven unethical based on the perspectives that disprove the misconception that fish do not feel pain, that fish do not feel pain, the negative impacts it has on the health of release fish, and the cycling high mortality rates associated with catch and release fishing. The idea that fish are not able to feel pain is labeled the fish pain bait, and it stems from the idea that because fish lack the neocortex, the part of the brain that humans associate with consciousness, consciousness in, and the ability to feel pain, that fish are not able to consciously feel and interpret pain. This reasoning attempts to justify the inhumane acts of catch and release fishing, as the fish are not able to feel the pain and suffering inflicted on them by the fishermen. This, is, however, is a misconception by, thought by many. Researcher Dorothea Scholz of the Institute of Veterinary Medicine experiments on eel stress levels when ongoing slaughtering practices with and without anesthesia and concluded that fish or er, that eels feel pain when ongo undergoing the practices of being slaughtered. Eels who had not been administered anesthesia during, the uh, during being slaughtered were recorded to have considerably higher stress levels than eels who had not been administered anesthesia. Considering the differences in stress levels indicated in eels when killed with and without anesthesia, we can conclude that pain was a factor in this distinction, as both control groups face being slaughtered, with the intro introduction of anesthesia being the variable in this experiment. With anesthesia being most relaxed that affects the se sensation of feeling pain, we can only conclude that the spike in stress levels was a result of conscious pain experienced by fish. With the conclusion that fish are capable of feeling pain having been established, that ethics behind catch and release fishing should be questioned based on the during, ram or during ramifications had on the health of released fish. Erica Carmelo, a professor at the University of Louisiana, explains that the presence of PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder can develop in fish and is characterized by the development of negative symptoms after experiencing a traumatic event. We can see this visual by Burnett Johnson, a graduate from Texas A&M University of Commerce with an undergraduate degree in biology, the physiological evidence of PTSD affecting zebrafish, showing on top the control group a normal, healthy zebra brain, zebra brain fish, and on the bottom a zebra fish that has experienced trauma and maintains symptoms of PTSD. Symptoms of PTSD often include decreases in consumption habits, erratic movements, significantly fewer excitatory behaviors and more. The development of these symptoms often occur in fish after experiencing traumatic events of being hooked, handled out of water, and then eventually put back in the water, establishing the idea of post-traumatic stress induced by catch and release fishing. This is supported by the College Board provided source in which Van Vanette writes, in wild animals, one of the most well-established principles in ecology is that the cost of increased vigilance is reduced time spent feeding, and avoiding predators generally, generally uh, also entails a significant cost with respect to reduced feeding opportunities. Carmelo's recognition of PTSD along with Zenet's <coughs> contribution of negative implications PTSD has on the daily life of fish better helps establish the idea of catch and release fishing being unethical based on the dermic ramification it has on health of release fish. A common misconception that comes from anglers who practice catch and release fishing is that it does not affect the health of released fish because, or it does not affect the health of fish because the fish is being released back into the wild. This, however, is only partially true. In a study performed by a group of scientists to analyze the effects on post-release sharks, scientists found an alarming number of shark mortalities after being released. Discovering mortality can occur days to weeks after being released, <clears throat> and found that the high lactate levels post-release correlated with mortality of the released fish. This is explained by Gallagher when writing, when the demand of oxygen for when the rate of demand for oxygen in cells exceeds the rate of supply by the cardiovascular system, animals undergo a shift from aerobic to anaerobic metabolism, and lactate is generated as a byproduct of the anaerobic glycosis. Somebody adds to the, to the fact that glyc 
Lactate levels correlate with mortality rates established by Gallagher through his experiment on mortality rates of released largemouth bass. Through their investigation, Smith found that largemouth bass who were hooked and brought in and exhibited significantly higher lactate levels than the control group of bass who hadn't been released or hadn't been hooked. After taking lactate levels, Smith examined the group based on the rate of survival. Smith concluded that high levels of lactate were associated with delayed mortality following intense anaerobic exercise. With all this said, catch and release fishing should be considered unethical as the sport produces high levels of mortality in fish that are caught and released with the intention of continuation of life after being released. Some solutions to address the points I have made include banning catch and release fishing altogether, completely banning the acts of catch and release fishing with some of the negative effects the sport has on release fish. The limitation of this is, is that it limits therapeutic relief, which takes away anglers or many anglers' solutions and reliefs to mental and physical health issues. Another solution to this is limiting limiting recreational fishing, limiting the number of fish that a fisherman is allowed to catch and release during a given time. The limitation of this is that the unnecessary killing of fish. Uh, the unnecessary killing of fish or the unwarranted killing of fish to continue fishing for pleasure and not hit set limits. As evaluated, the ethics behind catch release fishing as evaluated, the ethics behind catch release fishing are unethical based on the intentional suffering and infliction of pain onto the fish for pleasure and sport, and the lasting impacts associated with catch and release fishing. While we are not able to connect to fish as maybe a cat or dog, they do deserve the rights that are offered to other animals, including protection against animal cruelty or abuse. Protection from these acts of abuse should extend not only to animals who are considered more personal, but to all animals, regardless of their relationship to them. Thank you. I have two questions for you, Tyler. Absolutely. First question, how valid and reliable were the sources that you used, and then how do you know they were? My sources were extremely valid. I found all of them on the College Board provided sources on the, the College Board page. <sighs> Sorry, can you repeat that just one more time? Sure. Thank you. How valid and reliable were the sources that you used, and then how do you know? Right. So I found them on those websites that are all uh, peer-reviewed, that they include peer-reviewed articles and also um, like sources from like scientists and professors and people who study this for a living. So it's supported through that, but also through findings through like the peer review. So it, their their articles are used in other people's to help support their evidence. All right, and thank you. What additional questions popped up as you were working your way through the research? Hmm. Additional questions. Um. I was I was wondering about the PTSD in fish because I didn't personally I fish I enjoy fishing but I didn't realize that fish can experience all of the the implications of like the negative effects that can have on them like the PTSD in fish as well as like the post release mortality rates I didn't I didn't um, I didn't know that was a thing especially because catch release fishing you think that when you release fish that they'd survive. 